going to start off just by trying to get a sense of some of your influences. So, Kobe, let's start with you. Who's influenced you in your architecture and your craft? And then we'll get to Venus. Well, my inspiration is Venus. Okay. <laughs> all right. For all of us, but yeah. Wrong oh, but answer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, but it's true, you know, like Venus, we're standing outside here and we're just talking to one of the biggest developers in New York. Um, and having, if you will, the star power of somebody of a caliber of Venus and being humble enough to come and join us on designing a project together, it's, it's an honor, it really is. Um, the opportunity to think outside the box is where we're going in design next. And working with Venus on thoughts like that is what's important for us. So we come up with ideas and inspirations which are completely different and are really based about the project, where the project is located, what the history and the context is, and how we can really interpret it in the most proper form for the future use. Venus, your influences outside of Kobe? There's only Kobe, and not the other Kobe, this Kobe. <laughs> but, uh... But tell us how you got into this. You got into it because you saw a work that touched you or inspired right. you. So who were some of those influences? Well, I absolutely adore design. And when you're an athlete, especially a tennis player, you start very young. Um, I started playing tennis at four years old. I don't remember learning how to play. I just always known how, and that's how young I started. So, you know, as an athlete, you're expected to be an athlete, but you're not always just an athlete. And outside of my love on the court, I love design and all sorts of design, interiors, architecture, fashion, the arts, fine arts, all arts. So I decided to be a part of interior design because I love being able to influence a space and we all have to live, work, and have fun in spaces and I love being a part of influencing every aspect of someone's life. Kobe, I'm gonna turn it over to you, all yours. Go ahead, what, what would you like to ask Venus? I would like to ask Venus how it is that we can work together on this next project, because we have a project coming up together. And you know what is interesting is that Venus has an ability to come up with ideas and thoughts that are completely different. Because of her experience and her global experience, um, it, it's completely different than most people would have. So that opportunity creates a, a unique character. Most of us in the business, we are educated as architects, designers, um, but Venus has an opportunity to come from a background that is completely different. And that gives you a completely different perspective. And having a different perspective and thinking outside the box is very critical. And some very well-known people who came from other fields, like David Rockwell came from staging um, theaters for, um, what do you call it, in Las Vegas for the shows. He, he, he comes from a completely different perspective. So I think, Venus, if we are going to be able to pull this project together for this very well-known developer, um, I think that the most important perspective is your history and your idea of how you see things. And having you know, just spoken to Venus over the past few times, the perspective that she has is completely different. I think it creates a completely different value for development and a quality of life and that, at the end of the day, is what people are paying for. That's what people want. So, Venus, to jump off that, you've been, you've been touring, you've been all over the world. What are some of the design influences that, that struck you when you were maybe, maybe in your other life, in your more famous life? Oh, well, obviously, uh, Kobe, you're too kind. I would, we'd love to figure out a way to work together. I think we're, we're pretty similar, actually. And you're, you're pretty uh, well known for what you do. And, Clearly, you enjoy it, so I have to put that in there. And um, I'm not necessarily known for my interiors, but we do awesome work, but you are known for what you do, so <laughs> put it out there. But for me, I'm everywhere around the world, so it's, it's really interesting to see what's happening in design and how the whole world uh, does the same thing but does it differently. And I think on the car ride up here, because we're down in Palm Beach, and I was saying, oh my gosh, I love the uh, bar in Plaza Athene because we were talking about different fun places to go around the world. And it's one of the most exciting interior design spaces and I think learning from others. So I think there's room for everyone to play and to have fun and to design and we're all here to learn from each other. 
Miami's become become sort of a hot spot for star architecture. You know, you've got yourself, you've got Norman Foster, Richard Meyer, the late Zaha Hadid. Is there is there a visual culture that Miami has now? Is it a, is there a distinct visual culture that Miami has, Kobe? And maybe you guys can flesh upon that as well. Yeah, I think though Venus and I agree there is. Miami is a marketable um, culture based on the people who live here, who come from various countries. I mean, if you look around this room and you say, how many people were born in other locations? Just raise your hand. The majority of the population in Florida is not, was not born in Florida. And so what happens is that there is a great opportunity to create a diversity in design. So for example, just as an example, we're doing the Fort Lauderdale um, in, in Four Seasons. The Four Seasons is, is, is a very well-known and high brand. And we came up with a concept and a vision that is based on an opportunity to create and value that none existed before. Um, and it's no different than has done before people like Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, Frank Lloyd Wright had a client. Um, they went and looked at the site, and the site is very tough. And they told him, Frank, you know, I'm going to hire you because you come up with ideas. And there was a creek going through the site. And so it was a real pain in the ass to build a house on. And so Frank said to the guy, where do you sit? Where do you like to be here on the site? And he said, right here where the creek goes by. I like to sit right here. And that's where he put the house, right on the ledges so he can enjoy the water. And they became falling water. Um, we in Fort Lauderdale met with Four Seasons and the client. And they wanted something that would let them live outside, meaning see the sunrise, have a panorama of the water, and that created an opportunity, really, if you've ever been on a, or gone on a cruise, and you always go to the deck to see the sunrise, to see the sunset, to spend it with your loved ones, and spend time on it. Those are the kind of inspirations that we use um, to work with. And I think Miami, or Fort Lauderdale, or where we are here in South Florida, because we're on the subtropical weather in the lower 48, is a very dramatic opportunity. Um, and people look to Miami, Look, you're, you lived in Dubai. People come to me in Dubai and they say, listen, Kobe, you know, Miami is the best. I'm in Cape Town. People come to me and say, I would really like to live in Miami. And, you know, when I come here to Miami, she, you know, Venus, you can ask her. She's been around the world. Where is one of the best places to be? And it is Miami. And what makes Miami special besides the weather? It's the people. Venus, do you agree with that? <clears throat> Absolutely, 100%. Um, Miami is a unique city. And... Just being around the world, there's nothing like it. Uh, and it's a beautiful city. And it's the kind of city where it's a staple in many franchise business. You know, there has to be a Four Seasons. There has to be a Nobu. There has to be all of these different businesses that are, are very important to um, fashion and culture and style. So it's really become a staple. And it's very cosmopolitan. And it's got its own feel. And I, I love it because Miami is always Miami. And it doesn't have to try to be anything else. And w but what, yep. what, what is that? What is that its own feel? Can you just kind of flesh that out for us? What do you mean by its own feel? What, what is the aesthetic of Miami or the vibe of Miami? There's a certain type of energy here, and it's a lot of energy. It's a constant sunlight. It's the water. It's the architecture. And of course, we have really deep roots in Art Deco, but now it's really surpassed that as well. You have the older buildings that are still historic here, but now you, we do have that kind of a little bit signature Miami architecture, and, and we still see that happening. But of course, different things are happening in architecture as well. And I think you can speak even even better to that. But uh, it's really about the lifestyle here. And it's, it's important with each project and each design that you give that lifestyle. So it's not necessarily what is the latest trend and where are you going, but are you providing the lifestyle that people expect here in Miami and in all of your designs and your buildings? It's, it's true. Like last night, we were in Fisher Island, and the quality of life that you can have there is phenomenal. And you don't have to live on Fisher Island. You can, you can live in, in North Beach. You can live in various... The quality of life of the community here is very, very high. And that's what makes Miami very, very special. That's a very, it's a very nice opportunity to live in Miami. When I came to Miami, it was 1988. It was Miami Vice and Scarface days. Everybody wanted to leave Miami. You know, I came to Miami, there was no work, so we worked in the Caribbean, in the St. Lucia, Grenada, Turks and Caicos, Bahamas. And then my wife met me, and we stayed here since 1993. But really what happens is that you have a community that continuously to grow. 
I have a son, he's in Boston, he go to New York, he'll study, he'll work, but at the end of the day, he, he says you know, to me, Kobe, I wanna come home, I wanna be in Miami. So Miami is becoming a much more cultured, sophisticated destination. And like most people in this room are not from Miami, but they, have, they are and they have been making Miami their home, which reverts back to the rise and fall of the, com the, the, the economy of the real estate. No matter what happens, it continuously is a growth. If you just look at the United States Census and you look at the growth that we have here in Florida, which is about, if you check it, 10% per 10 years, 1% on an annual basis, we have to produce that widget, and if we don't produce it, there's going to be a greater demand and supply. Venus, uh, let's talk a little bit about how you sort of go about selecting the projects that you're working on. What, what are you looking for? What's the priority? And, and how do you, and this is going to be my first and last tennis pun of the night, but how do you best serve your clients? 120 miles an hour, always. You know, it's a, a unique business because with interior design as well as architecture, you have to build trust and you have to have trust in the community. And you have to have a good reputation as well. People need to know that not only do you provide good design, but you also follow through on the design, that you're there, and that's extremely important. So what we try to do is, is of course, there's always projects that you, you say is your dream project. I'd love to do this hotel in Hawaii or whatever it is. And then once you uh, kind of set your roots out, then people also come to you. You know, and we've worked with different architects or different builders and, and different people in the field, and they'll start to, to recommend you. What, what do you look at in Miami today and say, damn, I wish I had been on that project in some way? <laughs> Anyone that Kobe's doing, I'm like, ah, why wasn't I on the Four Seasons project Fort Lauderdale? So I'm going to make sure you are. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Kobe, same question for you. Um, when you're, you know, you've you've been here for a long time. Uh, you've you've obviously played your part in shaping the skyline. But what's the one that got away that you wish you had done? I don't think there's one that got away as much as uh, because we get involved in the in the projects. And as long as you have an opportunity to be part of the team, it is a team. Um, it's it's very good. And I think also to revert back to what Venus said, I think Venus is 100 percent correct. The service that you provide the client is what they come back for meaning continuously coming back and if the design is dynamic and you have to come back with new ideas and keep on being sustainable, being able to, to, to stay in the game, because it's not just coming up with the design, it's producing it, building it. That's it's a multi-year function. And you have to be a player to stay in and you have to be able to maintain yourself through the longevity of the, of the, of the game. And at the end of the day, he or she, whoever is able to stay strong until the end wins. And I think that, like Venus said, you know, she has a proven record in doing so. And people like her and like me are able to do so. And I think that's why we have been um, able to serve our clients in a, in a strong, sustainable way and make sure that um, the, the, pr the project gets done to their satisfaction. There's an influx of international architects making their you know, mark in Miami. You have Rafael Vinoli who's doing a project now. We, I mentioned some others. Is that, is that sort of... Is that competition? Do you see that as competition? Is it good for you? I don't think it's competition. I think it's complementary. I think the more people come and pay attention, I think Venus sitting on the stage next to me is arguably one of the best things that can happen to anybody who knows me in design. I, I concur. Absolutely. Right, Nancy? So I think that the opportunity is that people who focus on design, because design is collaboration, then you have an opportunity to really produce a better product. And that's what it's about. The better product is what our clients wish and desire to sell, and that's what our, the people who buy and rent and live in our spaces forever um, come up to us and say, thank you very much. I really like it. I really enjoy it. Venus, what's, uh, what's one design trend that you really are just, I don't want any part of that. What's one trend that you're not into? I'm not necessarily a trend person. I usually run away from them because trends can be great, but then when they're dated, they're dated. And especially with interiors, you want to be able to provide an interior that can last a while. And especially in public areas, they have to be changed, but you don't want to change them so soon. It doesn't want to be like the Miami Vice white coat, you know, like, why did I ever do that? Mm -hmm. So we have to be really careful with trends, and I usually try to maybe just come up with a solution that's not as trendy. 
that's our approach over at VSTAR. How did you get into how did you get into this in the first place? I mean, you had obviously more than a full time job, but probably would maybe three full time jobs is, is about accurate, you know? But because you're training all day and you're competing and you're traveling, but where was the time to really pick this up? Well, if you love something, it doesn't feel so much like work. And also, I have an awesome team. In fact, our director of design is here, Sonia, and she's an, an expert. She did a lot of work here, right here in Miami, on many awesome projects, um, Mint and different ones that I'm forgetting now. I'm sorry. My memory's terrible. She always reminds me of everything. I'm like, what was that? What was that? And she's like, that, that, that. So she's basically my memory. If she has to travel everywhere with me, but I'm sure you remember when someone served an ace at you, so you can get them back the next time, right? <laughs> yes, you remember the losses more than the wins, that's for sure. But um, yeah, it's important to have a, a good team, and also having a great team that works well together it pushes you to have the best idea. And it's it's important too to recognize when your idea isn't the best and scrap it right away. So, <laughs> but you know those bad ideas never make it to the client. So. <laughs> Kobe, and, and uh, for you, same question. Uh, what's the one sort of movement that you're not into or an aesthetic that you just don't want to, you don't subscribe to? I think that Venus is right. Trends is something you don't want to follow. You want to look for unique ideas that make a difference. Because at the end of the day, buildings or spaces are like people. They're very similar. But no matter what, you will look at people, they're very, their DNA is different. And each individual comes out different. I have two boys, same father, same mother, I think same father, <laughs> but <laughs> they're like day and night. They're like day and night. And many people who will look around the room, if they have a brother or a sister, they'll tell you, I'm completely different, even if they can be twins. So what happens is that when you design a space, it has to become personalized. And the way to make it personalized, you make it personalized to the space, to the history, to the location, to the, nat to the natural environment of it. And that's when it becomes special. And it becomes special when you make it also to the people that you're going to cater it to. And then when you can appeal to that, then you've really captured it. Both of you have worked on projects where you know, there's been a lot of room to, to go for it, really uh, aspirational projects, you can call it. But now we're in a, we're in a part of a cy the cycle where developers are getting a little bit more careful with how they're spending money. They may not get financing to do the kind of projects that they want to do. So for each of you, how is, has there been any impact of scaling back or tightening up on budgets? Because the, the first things to go are often design, design things. So Venus, you want to take that? Yes, um, there's that terrible B-E, and that's the first two letters of my name. So I don't know if I bring bad luck on myself, but that's a part of the project, and you have to be ready to adjust. And there are times when I can't let the dream go, uh -huh. and the rest of the team has to like hold my hand and you know, give me a tissue and say it's going to be fine. But it's important to, to go, and you can't fight the economy. Like, one person can't change the whole economy. And it's important to be able to, to accept that. But at the same time, I think the most important factor is really the demographic you're serving. So even if there isn't as much money to spread, you figure out how to serve your demographic and what they want and to create that environment and create that design no matter what the budget is. So you have to figure it out and you, and you can't give less. You still have to give as much as you can. Kobe, as an architect, same question. You're used to working, at least in the last couple of years, and in Dubai, uh, it seems like the, the checkbook is endless. It's, it's endlessly deep. Right now, it's changing a little bit, even there, even here. Any, any, uh, how do you get around that, or are you just really good at talking to them and getting more money? I, I can speak specifically for Miami. Um, Miami, look, we just are finishing the surf club. That project, when we started it in 2012, I got the approval. Um, we looked around at each other and said, who's going to come to Surfside that nobody knows about, which is on the north side of Miami Beach that nobody likes, and in Bell Harbor that, you know, everybody knows about. What happened is the clientele for that project were from the Northeast. We sold Chateau for mostly a group of neighbors from Argentina. We saw, we're selling Fisher Island to everybody. Everybody's coming to Fisher Island. You never know who your clients are. 
when I'm a contrarian, when people are telling me, oh, the market's so great, I tell them it's not so great. And when people tell me, oh, now it's really bad, I tell them, no, it's really not bad. The market does not go to zero. It's never zero. There's always buyers, always people looking to move to Florida. I just gave you examples how people around the world think that Florida is the best. By the cooling off economy, the cooling off market in, in whether it's international or domestic, people come to Florida and they want to buy real estate. Right now, there are still Brazilians, South Americans, there's still Russians coming in here. People tell me Russians are not coming anymore to Sunny Isles Beach, because I built maybe half a dozen projects in Sunny Isles Beach. Well, that's not necessarily true. If I had money and I was Russian, or if I was Ukrainian, my money had left Moscow a long time ago. Now, if I want to, and I'm in Dubai or Abu Dhabi, or I'm in Do Doha, Qatar, or I just finished a 750-room hotel in Mecca, guess what? I still want to have a unit someplace in the United States of America, and I'm either going to go to New York or I'm going to go to Miami. I grew up in Minneapolis. Nobody ever tells me they want to go to Minneapolis. I, 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 no, it's true. I love Minneapolis. It's great. One of the best places in the world. That's the next nope. challenge of your career, right? To make that a destination. <laughs> Nobody wants to go there. But Miami, everybody wants to come to Miami. And as time goes by, everybody wants to come to South Florida more and more. So I believe, I, I, don't, I know the numbers are going to continue. And if they stop, which they did, they stopped. When September 11 happened, guess what? September 12, I was looking at the phone. It didn't ring once. And back then, people used to call people on the telephone. I'm, it, it doesn't happen. After, after the stock market crashed in 2009, it continuously comes. There's a law. And we have a little bit of a crazy election this year. We have a little bit of a crazy economy. But at the end of the day, there's always people wanting and desiring to come here. And also, you have people in this population now who have kids, and, they're, and they have the next generation. Look, Venus, she can, she can go live anywhere she wants. Her employees can go live anywhere they want. And even if you're in New York, and you make your money in New York, or you make your money in New Jersey, or in Berlin, or in Paris, your point of reference and your point of, you know, your true north, you go someplace where it makes you feel good. And for quite a few people in the world, it's a place like South Florida. We really have a very little time left, so I want to open it up again, Kobe, to you. And any, any questions for Venus, any specific questions besides working together, because I'm sure that'll happen in the future. Yes, I have one question for Venus, and I didn't ask her before. <laughs> How do you get such strength to be a repeat winner and continuously stay in the game for so long, physically and emotionally. I'm 54 years old in November 1st. I mean, there has, you, ha, you have to almost be born to desire something and to be in the game for so long. I mean, I, I have the deepest respect for people like you who continuously, repeatedly do not fail when all odds are stacked against you. And in our business, like she said, we have the trials and tribulations of life, but I, I just don't know, and maybe it's because you love it, but it's amazing. I mean, I have the deepest respect for people like you who continuously do that. It's amazing. And I'm answering. <laughs> How do you do that is the question. Uh, thank you so much, first, for the compliment, and second, um, I, I do lose sometimes. I don't always win, <laughs> but I do love it, and I just feel so blessed that I had an opportunity to play and still play and to live my dream out there on the court. So when you're living your dreams, it makes it easier to, to have that strength and to work through it. And it's just an honor to do it. I'm, I'm going to flip his question a little bit. Um, you've been so damn good at something your whole life. Suddenly, you're getting into something where you're learning. You're learning constantly. You're, you're not as well-known an entity when you started, right? So how did you get past the fact that you were, you were just sort of queen of the world, and you had to go into a new field? How did you overcome that sort of starting from scratch again? Yes. Um, you, wherever you start at, you start at the bottom, that's for sure. And you know, I have an opportunity because people know my face, but it doesn't mean that they're going to believe in you as a designer. They may believe in you as a tennis player. And as an athlete, you, you do have the, you have to cross over. And so you have to build a good team. It's really important to have a great team. And especially when we first started, people said, well, they threw our brochure back at us. Like literally, I, I went to meetings where, 
it w we, we would laugh about it, and we can laugh now because we work, but you know, some person told me, well, you're not just another pretty face. I was like, a, a pr thank you. <laughs> I should have said, thanks for the compliment. Or, um, oh, we don't want your work here, or things like that, and it, and it did happen, and it just made you more determined. And we can do a good job. We ha I have a great team, and we are creative. And it, it, I love that challenge. And yeah, we started at the bottom, but we're not at the bottom anymore. Venus, Kobe, thank you guys so much. Thank you all for thank coming. Thank you so thank much. You.